اللہ مجانی فی مقامی حادا من من تنال ہوں مینگ سلواتوں و رحمتوں و مغفرات اللہ مجال محیاء میں محیاء محمد وال محمد و مماتی ممات محمد وال محمد اللہ انہا دا یوم تبرکت بہی بنو میہ و امنا آخرت الاکباد املائی امن اللہین علی لسالک و لسال نبیک صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ فی کل موتن و موقف و خف فیہ نبیک صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ اللہم العن ابا صفیان و مواویا و یزید ابن مواویا علیہم من قلانت عبدا عابدین و هذا یوم الفرحت بہی آل زیاد و آل مروان بکت من الحسین صلوات اللہ علیہ اللہم فضاف علیہم اللعن من قل والعذاب العلیم اللہم انی اتخرب علیک فی حادا اليوم و فی موقع فی حادا و ایام حیاتی بالبرات منہم و اللعنت علیہم و بالمضالات نبیک و آل نبیک علیہ و علیہ السلام اللہم الان اول ذال بن ذل محکم محمد وال محمد و آخر تابی اللہ علا ذالک اللہم الان دی صابتی جاہدتا حسین و شاعیت و بائیت و تابیت علا قتلک اللہم الانہم جمیعا السلام علیک یا ابا عبداللہ ولال ارواح اللتی حلت بفنائک علیک منی سلام اللہ عبدا ما بکیت و بکی اللیل و النہار ولا جانہو آخر آخر منی لزیارتکم السلام علیل خسین وعلا علی ابن الخسین وعلا أولاد الحسين وعلا أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص عن طول ظالب لعن مني وابدأ به أولا ثم العن الثامي والثابك والرابك اللهم العن يزيد خامسان والعن بيد الله من زياد وابن مرجانة والعمر ابن سعد والشمراء وآل نبی صفیان وآل زیاد وآل مرفان الہ یوم القیامة سجود اللہم لکا الحمد حمد الشاکرین لکا علا مصابق الحمد للہ علا عظیم رزیتی اللہم رسکنی شفاعت الحسین یوم الخرود وفت بدنی قدم صدق عندک عمل حسین وعصحاب الحسین الذین بدلوا معجہون دور الحسین علیہ السلام پر محمد وعال محمد صلوات It is my honor to invite Janab Noman Kazmi Sahab to recite Salam and Mercy today. For Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat.
محمد وعلی محمد صلوات اللہ صلی علی محمد وعلی محمد محمد وعلی محمد صلوات اللہم صلی علی محمد وعلی محمد رسول حق سلا دیتے کہتا ہے یہ چشم سے ٹپک کر آسو کہتا ہے یہ چشم سے ٹپک کر آنسو ہم وہ ہیں جو دو زخ کو بجھا دے ہم وہ ہیں ہم وہ ہیں جو دو زخ کو بجھا دیتے ہیں رونے کا دیگر سلوات
कभी मला शहे बहरो बर
محمد وعلى محمد بابا ذي بلان صلوات الله ما صلي على محمد وعلى محمد جب غرق خون جہاں سے چلے اکبر جواں جب غرق خون جہاں سے چلے اکبر لشکر میں غل ہوا کے لگی شیر کو سنا لشکر میں غل ہوا کے لگی شیر کو سنا نازک کلے جا کٹے گیا اب زندگی کہاں ہر نے پسر ہے ہاتھ جگر پر لبوں پا جا ہر نے پسر ہے ہاتھ جگر پر لبوں پا جا پھر دیکھ جائے ایک نظر نور این کو لے آئے کوئی تھام کے بازو حسین کو لے آئے کوئی تھام کے بازو حسین کو لے آئے کوئی تھام کے بازو حسین کو سن کر یہ شور دل میں درائی سنا نے غم تڑپے کبھی گرے کبھی اٹھ کر شہ امم آواز دیئے بنت علی کو بچش میں نم زینب پی سر کی لاش پا جاتے ہیں رن میں ہم زینب پی سر کی لاش پا جاتے ہیں رن میں بازو کو تھام و گھر کو سنبھال و بطول کے برچھی لگی جگر پا شبیح رسول کے برچھی لگی جگر پا شبیح رسول کے یا تو ہوا یہ شور کہ ہائے ہائے جواں پہ سر ماں بھی پھوپی بھی گھر سے نکل آئی ننگے سر والاش پر پہنچ گئے سلطان بہر و بر اس دم کے جب سی سکتا تھا وہ پا رہے جگر اس دم کے جب سی سکتا تھا وہ پا رہے جگر اٹکی تھی جان آنکھوں میں اس نور این کی تھی ساتھ ہچکیوں کے صدا یا حسین کی تھی ساتھ ہچکیوں کے صدا یا حسین کی چھاتی کو پیٹ پیٹ کے رونے لگے جو شاہ آنکھوں کو پھیر پھیر کے تڑپا وہ رش کے ماں دو تین بار آئی صدا یہ کہ آہ آہ دو تین 
بار آئی صدا یہ کہ آ ہا آ اکبر گئے حسین کا گھر ہو گیا تب اکبر گئے حسین کا گھر ہو گیا تب دولت لٹی تمام امام دلیر کی کاندھے پلاش لے کے چلے آئے شیر کی کاندھے پلاش لے کے چلے آئے شیر کی بنت علی نے زخم جگر پاجو کی نظر بس گر پڑی پکڑ کے کلے جا وہ نو ہگر چھاتی پہات مار کے پٹکا زمی پسر بانو پکاری لٹ گیا غربت میں میرا گھر بانو پکاری لٹ گیا غربت میں میرا گھر ماں سے چھڑا کے لے گئی موت اس دلیر کو لو آکے رو لو بی بیو اب میرے شیر کو لو آکے رو لو بی بیو اب میرے شیر کو یہ کہہ کے سرزمی پا جو مارا بسد ملال شق ہو گئی جبی ہوئے آرز لہو سے لال غش کھایا ہاتھ پاؤں ہوئے سرد جی نڈھار دیکھا گیا نشاہ سے بانوں کا جب یہ حال دیکھا گیا نشاہ سے بانوں کا جب یہ حال یوسف کو اپنے قتل کے میدان میں لے گئے لاشا اٹھا کے گنجش شہیدان میں لے گئے لاشا اٹھا کے گنجش شہیدان میں لے گئے جب خاک پر لٹا چکے لاشے پہ سر امام تا دیر روئے اور یہ زمین سے کیا کلام میں ابن بوتراب ہوں مظلوم و تشناکام میں ابن بوتراب ہوں مظلوم و تشناکام اور ہے انہی کا لخت جگر یہ مہ تمام اور ہے انہی کا لخت جگر یہ مہ تمام اٹھارہ سال کی ہے یہ دولت حسین کی اب ہے تیرے سپرد امانت حسین کی اٹھارہ سال کی ہے یہ دولت حسین کی اب ہے تیرے سپرد امانت حسین کی جب غرق خون جہاں سے چلے اکبر
Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Respected scholar, elders, brothers and sisters in faith. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah hasten the return of our Imam and give us all the tawfiq to achieve the, lash, uh, achieve the taqwa needed to be part of his lashkar, inshallah. And may Allah grant us all the opportunity to visit the land of Karbala. CFK strives to serve as a focal point to our community and cater its social and religious needs. To achieve this, the generosity of our sustaining members and program sponsors is paramount. Jazakallah to those who already are sustaining members and sponsors. May Bibi Zahra increase your barakat and tawfiqat. Ameen. For details on how to become a sustaining member or a program sponsor, please join the CFK WhatsApp group or visit ckdfw.org. Let us now recite a Surah Fatiha for tonight's sponsors, the marhumin of tonight's, tonight's sponsors. Marhumin of Sayyid Nayabad Hussain Rizi and family. Marhumin of Dr. Jafar Mahdi, Sister Nagin Fatima and family. Marhumin of Brother Rizwan, Sister Kiran Rizwan and family. Marhumin of Sayyid Akbar, Safiya Akbar and family. Marhumin of Brother Zahid Jafri and family. Marhumin of Fazl, Mirali, Nathani and Panju families. Marhumin of Brother Umair and family, Marhum Shahid Hussain Zaidi, and the Marhumin of Brother Sayyid Mushtaba Hassan, Sister Simi Hassan and family, Marhum Sayyid Asif Hassan Rizvi, and Marhumin of Brother Raza, Sister Lubna Rizvi and family, Marhuma Shagufta Raza Ali bint Sayyid Zafar Abbas, and the Marhumin of Brother Ali Abbas and family, Marhumin of Brother Naqi and Sister Fatima and family, Marhum Sarwar Hussain Rahim and Marhumin of Brother Kumail Sarwar, Sister Natasha Sarwar and family. Marhum Muhammad Hussain, Marhum Badrun Nisa, Marhum Hassan Abbas and Marhumin of Brother Kamar, brother, uh, Sister Uzma Rizvi and family. Marhum Jafar Ali Himani and the Marhumin of Brother Nadir, Sister Sharmin and family. Marhum Taki Imam, Marhum Shama Iqbal, Marhum Rahat Zahra and the Marhumin of the Imam family. Marhumin of the anonymous donors, marhumin who don't have anyone to pray for them, all our marhumin and marhumin of the ummah. Due to the recent increase in COVID-19 cases related to the Delta variant, CFK has been advised by the COVID task force to limit in-person attendance to vaccinated attendees only. This announcement has been made after very careful deliberation, keeping in mind the safety of our community, especially our children that are under the age of 12 and aren't vaccinated. A reminder for the day and upcoming programs, a few moments, the Sheikh will ascend to the member continuing the topic of this ashra building a Husseini community, followed by Matam Dari led by Anjumane Sarkar Wafa, after which we will offer Salatul Maghriban, inshallah. The CFK We Care first annual blood drive is in progress right now, right up till 11 p.m. for ages 16 and over. And again, a quick reminder for Salat, Mominina are requested to stand with their heels on the blue tape so that our safs are orderly. And let us please move forward so that Mumineen that will be joining us later have space to sit. But Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, salawat. Move it a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Thank you so much. Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullah. Audhu billahi min shaitan al rajim. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين سيما بقية الله في الأرضين عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني أفقه قولي اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل الساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليكم يا أبا صالح المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف صلاة الله محمد وآل محمد Alhamdulillah, so far we've had the, the blessing of spending about four nights speaking on the topics of building and developing a Husseini community. So night number six now, five nights so far we've spent, we spoke about really the building blocks of what it means to be in community where people are genuinely care about each other's welfare. So we spoke about the relationships in the family, the parent, the child. And for the last couple of nights, we've been discussing the relationships between the brothers. And we established that the relationship that we enjoy or we are meant to enjoy amongst one another is not any less than the relationships that we have with those who are related by blood or by marriage. So last night we focused on this rawaya from Imam Sadr alayhi salatu wasalam that he instructs Ma'al ibn Khunais on the seven wajib obligatory rights that brothers have on one another. Muslim brothers and sisters have on one another. So I just want to list them very quickly to use that as a reminder before we transition tonight to speaking about some of the challenges when it comes to maintaining relationships. Number one, the Imam says, the easiest of those is that you love for your brother or sister what you love for yourself and you dislike for them what you dislike for yourself. So that's number one. Number two, is that you refrain from angering your brother, that you work towards seeking and achieving his pleasure and for you to obey his instructions. Number three is that you protect your brother or support your brother with yourself, with your tongue, with your assets, with your hands, and with your feet. Number four is that you be the guide, the eyes, and the mirror of your brother. Number five, is that you not be satiated while your brother is hungry, and you not be thirsty while your, well, you not be quenched when your brother is thirsty. Number six, is that if you have certain assets and resources available to you, make them available to your brother too. The Dawaiya speaks about workers in the home. If that's available to you, Make those also available to your brother. And number seven, when all of those are done, the imam then lists a few things. Number one is that you make good his appointment. So if you've made a promise to do something, follow through in the promise that you've made. If he has invited you to his home, accept his invitation. We mentioned this just kind of on the tangent that how much Ahlul Bayt speaks about the importance of visitation of mu'mineen in each other's homes. Now maybe this is not the best time for this, but again, it's something that needs to be put on that to-do list, on that schedule. It's an aspiration that we hope for us to be able to visit each other's homes. This itself, we said there is a reason for this strategically. When we visit each other's homes, we get, again, an opportunity to observe the living circumstances of each other. Not to create further discord, 
but to create sympathy and compassion and to push us towards assisting one another. The Imam says, when your brother becomes ill, console him, visit him. When your brother dies, attend his funeral. And then, if your brother has a need, hasten towards fulfilling his request even before he asks you. So these are the seven obligatory, you want to call them categories, you want to call them things, because some of them are, they have more than one. But these are the wajib rights that the Imam is sharing with Mu'alla, and he's saying that I'm hesitant to tell you because I'm afraid you will hear and you will waste them. So all of these seven, or if we kind of open them up, maybe about 10, 12, 13 of these things, these need to be a part of the kind of the bylaws, the standard procedures in a community as far as relationships with one another. They're not utopian, ideal guidelines. These are supposed to be part of the day-to-day. -day. All right. So now we know what we're aspiring towards. Some of these we may be doing a good job. Some of them we may need to improve. Some of them we didn't know at all. We're not even thinking in those terms. So at the very least, what we know now is that the bar is probably a little higher than we thought. Okay. Now, why is this really important? Because we said in building relationships, once we know what, I'm, what my brother and sister expects of me and what is due to them, then I have decisions to make. In those small interactions that I have, I have to think about the implications and the repercussions on these things. And this is particularly sensitive for a group of people that understands themselves not just as being Muslim, but also to follow in the example, the family of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, that are the epitome of what it means to be Muslim. See that title of Shia, that's an, it's an honorific title. It's one that the Imams grant to other people. It is not one that we are allowed to put on ourselves. This kind of discussion is not for tonight. This is hopefully a little bit later, once we are grappling with these issues, and again, we can come to appreciate what this title really means. So I don't want to confront us on that. I don't find it productive at this point. A lot of people don't want to hear it, are not ready to hear it. It's not productive. But in any event, a lot of times these individuals would visit the imams and they would make certain requests or give certain reports. Again, asking, we can do this, this, and that, why aren't we? One of the companions by the name of Abi Ismail, he says, I came to Qutuli Abi Ja'far alayhi salatu wasalam, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. He says, I came to him, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajal. Qultu lahu ju'iltu fidak, may I be sacrificed for you? There's a lot of Shia in our area. So imagine right now if one of us had the opportunity to go see Imam of the time. You want to go give a report, right? DFW. There's a lot of Shia here. We can do something. We should do something. What should we do? So originally we go and we're trying to present the demographics. There's a lot of Shia here. فقاله, let me ask you. A few questions. فَهَلْ يَعْتِفُ الْغَنِيُّ عَلَى الْفَقِيرِ The Imam didn't ask like, oh, okay, how many? Where do they live? He said, let me ask you, do your wealthy, your financially independent, your financially stable, how do they care for the faqir, the struggling one? And remember, faqir is not destitute. Faqir is not the one who necessarily lives the streets. Faqir is the one that can't live close to the center because he has to live in a neighborhood, in a part of the city that's affordable to him or her. And then the Imam asked, وَهَلْ يَتَجَاوَزُ الْمُحْسِنُ عَلَى الْمُسِيءِ Does the better of you in character, muhsin, of good, 
of good virtue, good practice, mu'min. Do they forgive and tolerate and accommodate your weaker ones in faith? Musi, the ones who make mistakes, the ones who do sin, the ones who do guna. They're not good of you, right? The way that we look at it. The ones who are not worthy. How, do, how are they in relationship with one another? And number three, are they able to accommodate them despite their shortcoming? Faqultu la. Uh, Sahaba said, no, I'm sorry. This is not like this. Our wealthy don't necessarily, are not necessarily aware or have a program, an active program towards caring for those who are less than them financially, socioeconomically. And the better of us are not really concerned about those who are lower. They work within themselves. They've established their own cliques. فَقَالَ لَيْسَ هَؤُلَاءَ الشِّيعَةَ Imam said, I'm sorry, but what I understand of Shia are not these people. The Shia is the one that does these things that I asked. Again, we're not talking in utopian. Brother, sister, I don't want that to be misunderstood. Oh, Mulana, this is a nice thing you said. Inshallah, we can do it in 20 years. Hold on. If this, that's the way that we're thinking, then we have to put a pause on all of these titles that we use too. So I'm in a in-progress Muslim. I'm an in-progress Shia. Once I do these things, then I can call. That's not how we look at things right now. What, what if I drop dead tomorrow? I want to meet the Imam and say, I'm in progress? <laughs> no way. Again, another example. A companion came to Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajum. And one of the Sahaba that's narrating said, I was there with the Imam. And then the Imam turned to the person that came, he says, Ma lakum tastakhifuna bina. What's with you? Why do you insult us? Oh, imagine. I go to see the Imam, I'm so excited. Imagine you go see one of the great ulama, maraja, whatever, and you enter, and the Imam says, why, why do you insult me? How dare you insult me? I just met you. This man that had come from Khurasan, This is a May God destroy me, may God curse me. If I did something to insult you or to disobey you, the Imam then again, Bala, man Yes, you are a person who's insulted me. Again, Ma'adun and The man again retorted, no. Be far from me. See, when the imam is really upset with someone, he uses harsh language. Wayhak, woe unto you. Be silent and listen. وَهُوَ يَقُولُ لَكَ إِحْمِلْنِي قَدْرَ مِيلٍ Did you not hear the person when you were in close to Juhfa? You know Juhfa, so those of you who went to Hajj Juhfa. Weren't you around there and a man came and he says, Take me, إِحْمِلْنِي That means like, take me with your mode of transportation, put me on your back, whatever. Give me a ride. For a mile's length. فَقَدْ وَاللَّهِ أَعَتَيْتْ I'm surmising that the reason the Imam was this upset was not just because he's telling him you didn't respond to his request. You didn't even bring your head up. You didn't even dignify him to acknowledge him when he made the request. Look, the Rawaya Imam said, before your brother asks, go and satisfy his request. So you should know. But in this event, the Imam is so upset that someone came to you and you didn't even honor him by looking him in the face and saying, I won't help you. See, that upsets the Imam. And it's upsetting truly. So the Imam says, when you did that, 
You have insulted me. وَلَقَدْ اسْتَخْفَفْتَ بِهِ وَمَنْ اسْتَخَفَّ بِمُؤْمِنٍ فِينَا اسْتَخَفَّ وَضَيَّعَ حُرْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ A person who does not dignify the mu'min, the person who makes small the mu'min, the person who insults the mu'min, has insulted us and has exceeded the bounds of the sanctuary of God. We talk about wilaya, right? So I don't want to be in wilaya with these people. So how many of those requests from our brothers and sisters are we hearing? Many of them we don't even know about. So that's the first case, the Rawaya, number seven. And some of them, the person has to go through that, the struggle, the shame and the embarrassment that comes to make a request, and then sometimes we still turn them away. See, again, Rawaya say, Mu'min protects the dignity by taking on the pain and not asking for help. They're already telling us. Mu'min will never come and belittle themselves and say, hey, listen, I can't pay my rent. I can't pay my mortgage. I can't put food on the table. I can't send my kid to college. I can't send him to school. Whatever. Most times, they just deal with it. Okay. So the imam says, kun lahu dhahran. Be a backbone for your brother and your sister. All right, let's move on. So these are the rights that we're supposed to have on one another. And this is a really interesting thing I saw in Rawayat. Remember we spoke about respect to parents? Quran says, don't say oof to your parents. Oof, right? Even that much is disrespectful. Because they have so much respect, Quran says. Again, we have this in Rawayat. إِذَا قَالَ الرَّجُلُ لِأَخِيهِ أُفٍ إِنْ قَتَعَ مَا بَيْنَهُمَا مِنَ الْوِلَايَةِ if a brother says to a brother, oof, they've severed the wilaya relationship. All right. So we're here now. Building, developing Husseini community. This is what we're working towards. And again, I want to make this uh, kind of point. My objective here is not to present answers to you. You may say, okay, brother, what can we do to f build a community that all of these things are satisfied? My consulting fees are really high. I'm not just going to come and present all the answers. First of all, because I don't know what they are, but really it's just an invitation for us to start thinking. Each of you are so intelligent, and the fact that you're succeeding in life, at least in some facets, is a testament to that. You're incredibly intelligent. So you, we can figure all these things out. It's just whether we, are want, we want to do it and we're doing it. So really it's just an invitation. I hope no one leaves upset or disappointed that, well, he came and he said all of these things, but he didn't offer any solutions. Okay. I want to be in this good relation, but brother, you know better than I, people are weird. People are difficult. People do things that just make us scratch our heads, make us pull our hair out, aggravate us. And sometimes I wonder whether it's worth it. Right? Simple things sometimes we can't do. So you're talking about all these things. Yes, brother, my money. Brother, I help them going and fulfilling his requests and giving him my assets and all. But people are not appreciative of my generosity. I have a lot of experience to prove it. So the Quran and the prophetic example, again, is showing us ways that we can work through these challenges. And the one thing I'm going to talk about tonight in the few minutes that we have is a principle by the name of mudara. We can translate it as, worst case, toleration, which itself has negative connotations. But I think the better way of looking at it is accommodation. The key of a successful community is for the principle of accommodation to rule. What does it mean for us to be accommodating? Look, you already know these examples, right? We said in the prophetic example, the prophet has what objective? He wants to be in relationship with people, even though they're not at the level that he is. 
but he fulfills his obligation towards them as a brother. So you know, even the people who are not yet Muslim yet, the Prophet sees the potential in them. I may say in his time, most people were not Muslim anyways. You know the story of the Jewish neighbor, right? There's something about the Prophet that bothered this individual. You just can't stand the sight of them. You know, sometimes even people see you the way that you look, your skin complexion, the clothes that you wear, the food that you eat, the way you dress, it just bothers them. So when the Prophet would pass to go on his way, pass by this person's house, and two things this individual would do. Well, you heard that the, the, the person would throw trash on the Prophet, right? Again, to, to, to take away some of the appeal. And remember, Islam and the Prophet is so adamant on being clean. So they're trying to kind of put the Prophet in a difficult position. The Prophet, even though they would throw this garbage on him, he would go home, clean himself, come back. One of the other things they would do that I wasn't as aware when I was looking through this is they would also on the ground would put like these thorns and thistles. So when he would walk, he would go on his feet. And we don't have shoes like we have right now. The Prophet wasn't wearing like boots or anything. Like sandal-like, right? So it would go on his feet. It would bother him. When he would get home, he had to pick these out. And you know, this was a constant behavior. And then for a few days, this person wouldn't do this. The Prophet inquired, they were sick. So the Prophet went to visit them. He right? said, visit your sick? The person's not even Muslim. The Prophet's seeing the potential. He went and visited him. What's going on? The person was embarrassed. This is the type of relationship you want to be with me? He became Muslim. Look, now we're already Muslim, right? Imagine if your brother or sister is sick. They don't tell you. You inquire and find out, and then you go visit them. How much would they appreciate that? Mudara. See, this person did something that warranted the Prophet sever relationship, right? You came and said something to me about my child, about my husband, about my wife. You're a rude person. I don't want to be in conversation with you. I don't want to be in a relationship with you. Look, that's easy. And I'm not saying it's wrong of you. If someone doesn't know how to conduct themselves, I'm not saying go hug them and be their best friend. But look, the prophetic, the prophetic response, because he wants to be in relationship, is to find it in himself to accommodate. Number two, a person comes to Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam and says to him, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Muhammad. And I'll paraphrase this because we're kind of short on time. Anyways, person says that I became Muslim. I went to do the Hajj. There I saw the Imam. So I go to the Imam and I say, I've become Muslim, but the rest of my family is not Muslim. What am I supposed to do? And the question was actually like twofold. First of all, they're not. So from a belief perspective, they're not supportive of me, but also from a fiqh perspective, what am I supposed to do? You know, we share plates, we share a kitchen, whatever. So what should we do? So the imam asks a few questions. Listen, do they consume pork? And No. Okay, good. Stay at home. Be good to your parents. Be good to your mother. Eat with them. Don't isolate yourself. Stay in relationship. So this person does this over a period of time. The mother says, since you've come back from this pilgrimage, your attitude is different. Because prior to that, of course, conflict in the home, butt heads, they would say something, he would say something. So the mother notices that your conduct is different since you've come back. She explains, yes, I went and met this person, this is my imam, this is what they've told me. And the mother said, well, these instructions are instructed of a divinely guided person. Through action, be accommodating even if the person doesn't see the world the way that you do. Okay. Mudara. We end the program with jama'ah, right? Alhamdulillah. Shukr here, Shaykh Amin has blessed us these nights, that Shaykh Mahdi is not here. One of the conditions of jama'at salat for the imam is what? Is for you to accommodate ad'aful ma'mumin. I remember when I was younger, One of my friends and I, we would used to compete how quickly we can finish the namaz by doing all the wajah parts of it. I think it was like not, he had a record of like 90 seconds, four rakah, like little prayer, 90 seconds. He would do everything correctly now. He would stand, he would pause for a millisecond that's required, and then he would go and do all the sajda and all that. But 
if someone's standing as imam, can't do a 90 second prayer. Why? Because my back hurts. I'm going to pull my, I'm going to pull my back or something if I try to keep up with that person. So the imam is meant to accommodate the weakest of the followers. The weakest of the followers. So when we're talking about building community and accommodation, we're not just looking at those who are at our level and have our aptitudes and have reached those levels of spirituality as we have them and they see the importance of religion the way that we see them. No. If we are in a position, not just of leadership, but we are actively involved, the condition is to accommodate al ma'mumin, the weakest of the followers. I'll share this one example again from the companions of the Imams. And because they are living these things, they're sharing it. They're sharing their frustrations and the Imams are responding. Look, this can be a solution to many of our problems. The perspective has to change. The paradigm has to shift. Listen closely to this account. It's a servant by the name of Siraj, one of the workers of the Imam that the Imam sends for different tasks. Says the Imam sent me to fulfill a task to another city. So I went and I fulfilled it. When I returned, I was a little upset. I was a little down. It always says gloomy. So I was kind of in my thoughts at home, laying down, just on my bed, you know, trying to solve this problem. And one of the other companions came and said, the Imam wants to see you. You've come back. Come and give your report. So he goes to the presence of the Imam. And in the report that he's giving, this is what it says. Thumma jara dhikru qawmin. In the middle of our conversation, a group of people were mentioned. By off chance. So whatever you want to understand is group. Affiliation with a certain city, affiliation with a certain institution, affiliation with a, a certain family, whatever. The name of a certain people came up. فَقُلْتُ جُعِلْتُ فِدَاكْ إِنَّا نَبْرَأُ مِنْهُمْ We have nothing to do with these people. We detach ourselves from them. We disassociate from them. Bara'a, right? Tabarra, tawallo, tabarra. We don't have anything to do with these people. إِنَّهُمْ لَا يَقُولُونُ مَا نَقُولُ They don't say what we say. They don't do what we do. They don't look at things the way that we look at it. They don't practice the way that we practice. They don't value the things that we value. فَقَالَ يَتَوَلَّوْنَا وَلَا يَقُولُونَ مَا تَقُولُ تَبْرَعُونَ مِنْهُمْ He says, do they believe in the same basic things that we do? Are they in wilaya with us? At least conceptually, theoretically, do they buy into the same principles that we have? And they don't say what we say? Yeah, these are the kind of people I'm talking about. Not some outsiders. Not just the lay people, the common folk. These are from amongst us. قَالَ فَهُوَ ذَا عِنَّنَا مَا لَيْسَ عِنَّكُمْ فَيَنْبَغِي لَنَا أَنْ نَبْرَى مِنْكُمْ The Imam said, okay, let me ask you a question now that you were so frustrated by this. If you don't say what I say as your Imam and you don't do what I do as your Imam, should I disassociate from you? He flipped the scenario. Said, Raj said, no. And the Imam says, listen, you and I are also not see things the same way. We are not also at the same level. We don't always say the same things either. But we're in that relationship. The Imam says, فَتَوَلَّوْهُمْ وَلَا تَبَرَّوْ مِنْهُمْ Don't disassociate yourselves from them. And then the Imam says, I'll explain why. So I hope this now becomes, again, a guiding principle. He says, إِنَّ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ 
من له سهم و من له سهمان و من له ثلاثة أسهم continues 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 in explaining the different portions of iman there are seven portions of iman some of the muslims have one portion some of the muslims have two portions and some have all the way up to seven the Imam says let me break it down for you then فَلَيْسَ يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَحْمِلَ صَاحِبُ السَّهْمِ عَلَى مَا عَلَيْهِ صَاحِبُ السَّهْمِينَ It's not befitting that the one who holds one portion be burdened by the one who holds two. See brother, I'm struggling just to do my prayers. You not only pray all of them, you do them all on time and you do the night prayer. I still believe that praying is important. But there's just something that's not working in my life that I'm not able to make all of my prayers. You and I want to be in relationship. I'm not saying that you should abandon your prayers and become like me. But if you don't want to have anything to do with me because I don't meet those minimums in your mind, then the Imam says, you, I'm sorry, are have a twisted mentality. See, there is room to accommodate even those who have one portion of Iman. Me, please accommodate me. I'm not perfect. I have shortcomings. Some of them are visible. Right, we've been giving this example. I have shortcomings. Some of them are visible. I can be in better shape. All of us have shortcomings. Some of them are not visible. Okay? Just because you're a little further along than me doesn't give you the right to cut me out because I'm not good enough. See, a lot of times when we're thinking about building, we're like, well, we have to start with the best of the best of the best. Only those mu'mineen that do this, 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 and that, who say this, 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 and that, who think this, 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 and that. And then we kind of just like throw it to the wolves, the rest of them, that don't meet that. Look, there's so many, I'll speak about younger people. There's so many younger people that could be in this majlis right now. From our community, from our children, they could be here. And I'm not saying being here makes you a really good person and nothing else is important in life, but they could be here. We can be in relationship with them, but instead they're somewhere else. Okay? There are a lot of them that wish someone would care for them the way that Oyat are speaking about. But because I haven't been able to do that, this person has not found that brotherhood and relationship and community here. So they've become disenchanted. The challenge is to, wherever we find ourselves in these portions of Iman, make sure, number one, that we don't impose, don't impose our potentials on people who may be of a lower capacity than we are. MashaAllah, you go in the gym and you squat 500 pounds. MashaAllah, I can't even squat the bar. So should you kick me out? MashaAllah, you read Quran very nice. I can barely put the alphabet that I know together. Should there be a place for me? I have a terrible akhlaq with my mother and father. Should I be an outcast? Should I be kicked out because of that? God forbid I do the worst sin on this earth. Should I be excluded? See, people will come to the Prophet and say, I can't be with you. I've done unexplainable, you know, ex- uh, you know inexplicable things. You can't even think what I've done. There's no way that I could be allowed entry and membership into your group. You are good people. I'm not. Right? Time after time after time, the Prophet said, what did you do? No, 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 no. It's so shameful. It's... The Prophet says, I'll, set, I'll raise the bar for you. Well, you killed someone? You, are you murdered? Did you kill someone? No, not like that. But the Prophet said, Allah is forgiving. What are you talking about? Why do you self-reject? Why do you self-deny? 
So sometimes some of us are even struggling with that sense of imposter syndrome. We don't belong with these people because we're not like them. Building community means accommodation. Mudara. You come as you are. Doesn't mean that you can stay the way that you are indefinitely. No, we have a plan to help each other progress, to grow, to succeed. And we genuinely care. Imagine if we were able to translate that into some action and then go after younger people. There isn't something inherently deficient with them that they would reject it. What's hard for them to accept is when you stipulate certain things that are not in the ruayat. That's when they say, this doesn't make any sense. I don't want any part of it. So the example of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam is come one, come all. You are good enough to be in relationship with us, even though you don't think it. So the brother and sister, our role is here to be accommodating, to bring each other in, but accept the principle that all of us are in a state of progression, of betterment, and we all have faults that need to be worked on. That's mudara. Tomorrow night, inshallah, we'll continue speaking of this, present a few other kind of Examples and strategies that the Imams have used to increase that accommodation, the capacity for accommodation. And even in difficult times where people are making it hard to be in a relationship with them, how we can persevere, inshallah. We can dim the lights, inshallah, for Musiba. Jazakumullah khair. They're just asking if we can move up. Just a little bit for those who are in the back too, to fit as well. Inshallah, with the few minutes that we have, we'll recite Musiba if we can just dim the lights, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. وعجل فرجهم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك السلام على علي الأكبر يا أول قتيل من نسل خير سليل من سلالة إبراهيم الخليل صلى الله عليك وعلى أبيك إذ قال فيك قتل الله قوما قتلوك يا بني ما أجراهم على الرحمن ولا على انتهاك حرمة الرسول على الدنيا بعدك العفا On the day of Ashura, when all of the companions of Abu Abdullah came to the Imam requesting permission out of the respect and the honor that Asha paid for the companions of Ahlul Bayt, the non Ahlul Bayt went first to achieve martyrdom. فلما لم يبق معه سوى أهل بيته when only the companions from Ahlul Bayt remain خرج علي بن الحسين عليه السلام وكان من أصبح الناس وجها وأحسنهم خلقا the first of the Ahlul Bayt to go to battle was the beloved of Al Hussein Ali al Akbar the one who is the most beautiful in character, the one who is the most beautiful in complexion. 
when he goes to his father requesting permission. فَاسْتَأْذَنَ أَبَاهُ فِي الْقِتَالِ Imagine Hussein has witnessed all of the companions so far, one by one going, achieving martyrdom. He knows when one goes, they don't return. When Ali in Al Akbar comes asking permission, فَأَذِنَ لَهُ ثُمَّ نَذَرَ إِلَيْهِ نَذَرَ آيَسٌ when Hussein looks to Ali in Al Akbar, he looks at him with a look of despair. Wa The tear flows from the eyes of Imam Al Hussein. He begins weeping. This is his son, this is his everything. Imagine fathers, imagine mothers. You know your child is coming, asking your permission to leave. You will never see them again. You will only collect that lifeless body. How will you respond? Al Hussein knows that Ali in Al Akbar is not coming back. Ya Ali, how can you leave your father's side? Imam Al Hussein cries, Allahumma jhad. Oh Allah, you be a witness. Faqad baraza ilayhim ghulamun. I am dispatching a young man. Ashbahu nasi khalqan wa khulqan wa manniran mi rasulik. I'm sending a young man who from the view of handsomeness, perfection of character, was closest to your prophet. When we were eager to be reminded of the prophet, we would look to the face of Ali in Al-Akbar. Oh Allah deprive these oppressed people, the oppressive people. Oh Ibn Sa'ad, may Allah sever your family as you have severed mine. Ali in Al Akbar with permission roars like a lion attacking these enemies, saying these war cries. Ana Ali ibn Al Hussein ibn Ali. نحن وبيت الله أولى بالنبي تالله لا يحكم فينا ابن الدعي أطعنكم بالرمح حتى ينثني أضربكم بالسيف أحامي عن أبي ضرب غلام هاشمي علوي I am Ali ibn al Hussein by the house of Allah we are superior to you O enemies bearing relation with the Prophet not like these baseless oppressors I shall strike you with the sword until it bends the sword of a Hashemite Alawite youth I will continue to defend my father by Allah the son of the illegitimate one will not have command over us he attacks these enemies several times and the reports killing a large number of them even as they regroup Ali and Al Akbar still prevails over them but as he continues the fight the exhaustion and the thirst begins to overtake him فَقَاتِلْ قِتَالًا شَدِيدًا ثُمَّ رَجَعَ إِلَىٰ أَبِي He returns to his father Al-Hussein وَقَالْ يَا أَبَا الْعَدَشُ قَدْ قَتَلَنِي My father, I want to continue fighting but the thirst is killing me وَثِّقْلُ الْحَدِيدِ أَجْهَدَنِي The heaviness of my armor is hurting me فَهَلْ إِلَىٰ شُرْبَةٍ مِّن مَّاءٍ سَبِيلٌ أَتَقَوَّى بِهَا عَلَى الْأَعْدَىٰ My father, I now ask for water to quench my thirst. I know the children are thirsty too. My father, I just want a small drink to continue fighting with these enemies. فَبَكَى الْحُسَيْنُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ وَقَالْ 
وغوثا يا بني قاتل غليلا Hussein begins to cry my son where shall I bring this water from continue to fight a little longer I see your grandfather preparing to quench your thirst the prophet preparing to quench your thirst Adin al-Akbar continues in battle but as he is fighting one of these wretched enemies it is narrated pierces the back of Ali with his spear and then the other comes and strikes the head of Ali with his sword they say that strike splits the head of Ali open in some accounts they say Ali lost control of his body he falls ho- he falls forward on his horse as this horse was blinded and confused instead of returning to the camp of Abu Abdullah this horse takes this as a command to further go into the enemies as they continue further into the enemy ranks they surround the body of Ali they cut the body of Ali and Al-Akbar into pieces Ali and Al-Akbar cries Ya Abata Alayka minna salam My final farewell my father But don't grieve Hadha jaddi Yuqriuka salam My grandfather's here He sends his salams Wa yaqulu lak He says to you Ya Hussein Ajjil al-qudumi alayna Hussein quickly come to our side Fajaw al-Hussein Hatta waqaf alayhi Wada khaddahu ala khadd Hussein comes to The butchered body of his son Placing his cheek on his cheek Ya Ali what is left of you وَقَالَ قَتَلُ الله قَوْمًا قَتَلُوكَ Allah, may you kill the one who killed him. مَا أَجْرَاهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَعَلَى انْتِعَاكِ وَرْمَةِ الرَّسُولِ What measure of audacity allowed them to kill you, to violate the sanctity of the Prophet عَلَى الدُّنْيَا بَعْدَ كَلَافَ Woe be unto this world after you, Ali. How can I live without you? وَخَرَجَتْ زَيْنَابِ تُنَادِي يَا حَبِيبَا يَا بْنَا أَخَا Zainab comes out lamenting My brother, oh my nephew وَجَعَتْ فَكَبَّتْ عَلَيْهِ Zainab comes and throws herself on the body فَجَعَ الْحُسَيْنِ فَأَخَذَهَا وَرَدَّهَا إِلَى النِّسَاءِ Zainab, go back. This is not the place for you to throw yourself on the body. Hussein turns to the camp. Ya akha, ihmalu akhaakum. My companions, come and collect your brother. Ala lanatullahi ala alqawm al-zalimin. Wa sayanamu al-lazina zalamu. Ayyamun qalabin yanqalibun. Matame Hussein. Shabir Dundeta, 
अकबर कहाँ गिरा है बेटे के कातिलो से ये बाप पूछता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है बेटे के कातिलो से ये बाप पूछता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है इतना दईफ हो गया आता नहीं नजर आता नहीं नजर अकबर की लाश से यू ही कहता गुजर गया है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है बेटे के कातिलो से ये बाप पूछता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है जईफ हो गया आता नहीं नजर आता नहीं नजर अकबर की लाश से यू ही कहता गुजर गया है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर सारे उठने की कोशिशों में जामू के बल गिरा जामू के बल गिरा एक कांपती आवाज में आबिद ने जब सुना है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर उठने की कोशिशों में जामू के बल गिरा कांपती आवाज में आबिद ने जब सुना है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर बेटे के कातिलो से ये बाप पूछता है अकबर कहाँ गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है अकबर इतना जईफ हो गया आता नहीं नजर आता नहीं नजर अकबर की 
लाश से यू ही कहता गुजर गया है अकबर कहा गिरा है शबीर ढूंढता है
this start? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah, Akbar Allah, Akbar. Allah, Akbar Allah, Akbar. I shall the one la la. Ha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna aliyan waliyullah Ashhadu anna aliyan waliyullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala khayr al-amal Hayya ala khayr al-amal Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله أشهد أن عليا ولي الله وأنه حجة الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر استغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده 
Allahu Akbar wa bihawlillah wa quwwatihi aqoomu wa aqa'adu Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wal-Dhalim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Yikul Huwa Allahu Ahad الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد كذلك الله ربي الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده Sami Allahu liman hamidah, Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdah. Allahu Akbar, astaghfirullah. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdah. Allahu Akbar, alhamdulillah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد Allahu Akbar Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim wa bihamdih Sami Allahu liman hamidah Allahu Akbar Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la wa bihamdih Allahu Akbar wa astaghfirullah Allahu Akbar Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la wa bihamdih اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله صل على محمد وعلى محمد الله صل على The du'a that's traditionally recited after Maghrib Salat 
the dua that we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exercise his mercy, to forgive us, to deliver us from the punishment, to remove our misfortunes and to grant us paradise. And in that paradise, we ask for a residence in close proximity to the Prophet and his family. Peace and blessings be upon you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma inni as'aluka mujibati rahmatik wa azaymi maghfiratik wa najata min al-nari wa min kulli baliyya wal fawza bil janna wal ridwana fi dar salam وجوار نبيك محمد عليه وآله السلام اللهم ما بنا من نعمة فمنك لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلوات There's a, there is a quest for the device ahead. There are uh, some mominin who are sick, is especially Sister Nada Al Habib, uh, wife of Brother Nabil Al Habib, and also Brother Ahmed Farid. Uh, both of them has been uh, diagnosed with can cancer. May Allah give shifa to them, and also give shifa to all mominin who are requested for dua. Let's recite five times a mayyuji. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء 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 أما يجيب المصطر إذا دعاه يكشف السوء برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الله Brothers and sisters, salam alaikum. Uh, my sincere condolences to the Imam of our time, to the brothers and sisters that have gathered here. Uh, the, the announcement we made yesterday wasn't taken lightly. Um, you've all heard, you know, the decision to limit the attendance here to only vaccinated members. Um, so I know that that creates a lot of inconveniences for families. Um, yesterday we made the announcement. Today we tried to s send that information through WhatsApp. Um, I know that we had some families show up because they didn't know or they didn't understand. Um, so my apologies to not only those families, to the volunteers that were trying to also implement uh, the decision. So I know this is not easy, but we're all taking each day step by step and appreciate your, your um, understanding. Um, just as a reminder, I think we're like at 99% in terms of mask wearing. I know I saw a couple of people during Matam not wearing their mask. I'm not here to police. I don't want my volunteers trying to police. Um, you know the mask mandate, it's, it's not something new. So you know about these things. So please, um, if you forget, Allah, you know, that everybody knows that. But try to remember to keep it over your nose, try to keep it over your mouth, so that way we can continue to do this. Because the worst thing that can happen is if somebody is impacted and they do infect others in the community, that for that, there's no, nothing that in my heart I can do for that. So just please remember, sanitize your hands. Masks are required at all times. Um, and it also helps if you've done your vazoo at home before you come here. Um, and then I think uh, just, just a, a courtesy. Um, I know somebody just came in my ear and said, hey, guys, you, you guys are doing a great job. So as, as you see a volunteer, as you see somebody doing something, just in their ear going back and saying, hey, thank you very much for doing that makes the whole, whole lot of difference. Um, and then I also want to say thank you to Brother Asad for reciting Azan. I know that um, our youth are kind of our focus, 
Sometimes they're nervous coming up here, so alhamdulillah, he came up and did the azan today. And I just wanted to make sure that I, I saw that and I wanted to say thank you. Bar Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat. Just one last reminder. Um, children under the ages of 12, let's just say it the other way around. We are allowing people that are over 12 years old and vaccinated. So ages 12 and up that are vaccinated members are allowed to come to center. Um, inshallah, with that, remember to wear their masks and inshallah we will continue as a Azadari.